Good afternoon, folks. What's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. I've got the uh, uh, live cam here, kind of live cam, doing something a little bit different like we did last week when we did the uh, uh, the basics of buying silver, which was kind of a recap of a video we uh, did a long, long time ago. Uh, and uh, a successful recap, too. I think it turned out quite nice. I hope you liked it. Uh, and we're going to do the same thing for gold. We're going to do a recap on uh, uh, the basics of gold buying. You know, kind of, why do I need to buy gold? What are the basic products? What are the best buys out there? Fractional gold. And stuff that you probably should pay, you know, not buy. And, and also things like how to buy uh, and how not to buy. And uh, establishing relationships uh, with people that you're buying or selling to. Uh, but let's get into the first important thing here. Uh, but meanwhile, here, let me kind of show you a couple different products that we will be talking about, your primary products. We're going to be talking about the fractional products and some of the bars, and uh, uh, and we'll get over to uh, some of the foreign products that have been around for decades and decades, if not some of them more than a century. Uh, but the first thing I really want to talk about is the reasons that we buy gold. Um, <clears throat> And I guess that's, you know, why buy gold? What are the reasons that we want to own gold? Well, one of the first reasons that I like to talk to people about, now we get a lot of folks that come in and say, well, you know, when the dollar goes to zero, uh, uh, you know, that's why we want to buy uh, gold. We want to make sure that we have, you know, we can barter with this stuff. Well, first thing, folks, uh, kind of like the silver folks, if you think you're going to be bartering with this stuff, I hate to burst the bubble there, but you're not going to be bartering with gold or silver. Uh, and the reason is, is that, uh, I don't believe that we're near the same kind of collapse that the Roman Empire, you know, when the Roman Empire just went away. Uh, I think we're in that kind of uh, uh, inflationary period, and we've been in it for quite some time, uh, where the dollar just buys less and less. And we're not quite into that hyperinflationary uh, period like where Germany was. Uh, in Germany, even during their hyperinflationary period, uh, Germans did not go to trade gold or silver coins. Now remember, they were using gold and silver coins back in that period uh, for trade, uh, 20 mark pieces gold. And I don't know, I should have brought out a 20 mark gold piece, but it's about that size right there, and a 10 mark, and that's, that's actually, that's a French 20 franc uh, gold coin. Uh, but, you know, and, and they used gold coins uh, up into the 20s and the 30s. Uh, then they started to disappear after that, but uh, Germans, even in the hyperinflationary period, weren't really trading gold with their local butcher or their local bread shop or whoever they're dealing with, they were still using German marks. It just took a lot more German marks to buy a loaf of bread. And you see the parallels here. It takes a lot more dollars to buy a loaf of bread, to buy, to go to your butcher and buy meat, okay? <clears throat> and, I, and I'm going someplace with this, all right? So don't, not, let me not lose you here. Uh, these are the reasons that you want to own gold, not for the, you know, barter and the, uh, uh, the end of the world type scenario. Now, even Germans during their hyperinflationary period, and we, we haven't seen hyperinflation yet, folks. The Germans basically saw a 20 mark bill, which would have been equivalent to $20 prior to their inflationary period, would be similar to you know, what this would buy. But at some point, Germans were printing 1 million marks and 10 million mark bills and 1 billion marks. And it would take a stack of 1 billion mark bills, or even as the old saying goes, a wheelbarrow full of 1 billion mark bills to buy a loaf of bread. But the the whole reason I bring that up is because they still were using marks, okay? The public was familiar with marks. There was enough marks out there to trade, obviously. Uh, it's just that the mark bought less and less. Now, this is the same reason why you want to own gold, because the dollar buys less and less and less, all right? This was made in 19, this is dated 1914, but uh, they stopped really, uh, uh, let's say the most recent dates, would common dates would be 1928 for, so let's pretend that's a 1928 $20 saint. And let's pretend this is not a 1928 20, I should have got one too as well to give a better representation of what the bill looked like, but imagine back in 1928 that you had both of these items right here. You had the $20, 1928 $20 bill, and you had your 1928 $20 gold piece. I'm going to ask you this simple question. If you stuck these, both of these, under your mattress in 1928, which held on to its buying power? Well, <clears throat> that's a simple answer, and I hope that kind of explains why you're buying gold. If you had held on and stuffed this under your mattress in 1928, you could still spend it for 20 bucks. It's still worth 20 bucks. And that $20 gold piece back when we were on a gold standard right there in 1928 would have been worth 20. You could have exchanged it for this bill. 
But now, what is that gold piece worth versus what that $20, uh, and again, what will this $20 bill buy? Well, we'll still buy 20, even if it was marked 1928, don't forget, you can still spend those old bills. You can't get gold with it, but you can still spend them. Even though that bill's marked 1928, you can only buy 20, same as a new bill, $20 worth of goods with it. However, this item is worth what? $1,910, $1,915 worth of gold. So what has held its buying power better? And that is the whole point of me explaining why you want to buy gold. No, you're not buying this as a, a, a trade unit to uh, buy chickens and, and buy uh, 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 food with. Um, you're using it to hold the buying power of the money that you have, okay? Uh, and that's why you want to buy gold. Now, as far as a track record goes, think about this. United States currency started in what, uh, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think when the first legal currency bills came out, 1860s or something like that, or was it the 1880s, I'm sorry. I think all the 1860s stuff is still redeemable to this day, except you can't redeem it for gold or silver, all right? Uh, but uh, uh, how, how old is that? How old is U.S. currency? How old is the U.S. fiat system, so to speak? Well, we weren't on the fiat system back then. We were on the gold standard. But, you know, the U.S. dollar has been around for, what, less than 200 years for sure. Um, you know, the empire, all right, uh, the Roman Empire, I don't even know how long that lasted, but it's gone. All empires kind of go away. Their currencies eventually go away. Uh, but the value of gold is it's 5,000 years. It has a 5,000-year track record. Uh, gold has never gone bankrupt. Countries like Rome go bankrupt. All countries and empires eventually go bankrupt. Even the U.S. empire will go bankrupt, change somehow, I think. But uh, uh, eventually, at some point, this $20 bill will probably not be spendable anymore. It'll take a lot more of them to spend. Or, Fortunately, we haven't had a money change-in system yet, but that could happen in the future. But this is why you want to own uh, uh, gold as wealth preservation. Okay, I hope I explained that okay. Was that... Uh, all right, I'm getting a thumbs up from my crowd in the back there that that wasn't too bad. Did I miss any key points here? Yeah, I probably did, but let's move along here. Now, let me uh, get into some uh, basic products here. I'll start out with, in my opinion, the best thing to buy in precious metals is buy the least expensive uh, industry-recognizable products that you can, all right? And when I say least expensive, I mean that, uh, here, let me get something for you to look at here. Sorry about that. Uh, move some things around here. Man, those gold trays are heavy, aren't they? <laughs> there you go. All right, let's move this back over here. Oh, actually, I'll put that back over here, excuse me. And uh, this is what I call the basic recognizable products in the United States. These are probably the most common products out there, and the premiums are somewhat reasonable. Let me get a sip of my coffee here real quick. Most of you recognize these products. Um, you've got your one ounce gold bars, you've got your Krugerrands, you've got your gold maple leaves, you've got your gold eagles, and you've got your gold buffaloes. And there's some products that aren't in here, but again, I'm talking about core products that are recognizable, probably globally, not just in the United States, but globally, these products are recognized all over the world with people that buy and sell gold. Uh, so I'm going to call these the basic products right here. And, and I'm showing one ounce increments because it's always cheaper to buy one ounce increments than it is to buy uh, the fractional units, which I'll show you here in a little bit. And do I have any fractionals? No, nope, I got them over here, but we'll get to those. Um, so let me kind of give you an example of a couple products. For the, for the last, since I did my last basic gold video, I believe that the price on gold bars has not changed. I mean, it's pretty amazing actually. Uh, since 2019, to 2020, maybe they've gotten even a little cheaper. Uh, gold bars have gone from anywhere from uh, spot plus $60 to spot plus $80. That's kind of been the range on one ounce gold bars. And uh, you know what? I do want to show you a couple different examples of gold bars since I have them here as well. Uh, give you some visuals. There you go. There's a uh, uh, Scotia Bank. That's probably actually a collectible bar. Scotia Bank, uh, which is a, uh, I believe, a Canadian firm. Uh, and then we've got some fractional pieces here, Perth Mint and things like that. But the gold bars primarily have been the best deal in the last uh, uh, three years, uh, three or four years. And they've been ranging between spot plus 60 to spot plus 80. The next best deal out there I would consider would be the uh, Krugerrands. Krugerrands have been consistently uh, cheaper than the, these other products, the Maples, uh, Gold Eagles, and the Buffaloes. But Krugerrands have been around since 1968. They've been making these since 
before Americans could even legally own gold, the, the uh, South Africans were producing these one ounce gold coins. Uh, and I think uh, uh, 68, 67, uh, if you want to put in the comment section, let me know. I'm sure it's around that range. Uh, but there's millions and millions. I mean, the product is available and they're still making this product today. Um, I think I'd be doing a disservice if I left it in the plastic. Let's pull some of these things out and give you a little bit better view of that. There you go. How's that? And I'll remove that just to give you a little better view. There's the, uh, 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 I guess you would call it the reverse of the, most of the time the obverse would have the date, but there's the reverse of the coin, what I would call the reverse. The obverse usually has the bust of the person, which uh, that's a spring buck right there in case anyone wants to know. This is a 1982. Oh my gosh, man, that goes back some time. That was, uh, you know, right after the uh, first big uh, bull market in gold, which there was a seven, eight hundred bucks or something like that. Uh, and there's the... Uh, um, Kruger, not Freddy Kruger, um, and I'm not sure it's Kurt Kruger, but uh, there's Kruger, I, I, in, who is named after Kruger, Kruger Rands, uh, and uh, he's the uh, founder or one of the original founders of South Africa. But these coins have been around a long time, no collectability to them really whatsoever, and they trade uh, currently, let me, let me kind of get an idea, <clears throat> give you a rough idea what they trade for right now. And by the way, these are currently in that uh, 70 to $80 range, typically, the gold bars are, if I didn't say that. But uh, let's see here. What is Krugerrands? I'm looking at the spreadsheets here, and we are at... Uh, Krugerrands are about 85 bucks over. Again, very reasonable, and I think for the last couple of years, they've traded between 75 and 90 bucks over spot. Currently, um, I guess the average price is out there, spot plus 85 bucks. And again, larger quantities, you can buy this stuff cheaper. Not by a lot, but you can buy this stuff cheaper in larger quantities than the prices I'm telling you right now. But the ranges on Krugerrands uh, would be, uh, again, uh, I would say 75 to 95 bucks. Um, now that I'm thinking about it for the last couple years, uh, currently in that $85 range. Um, with, you know, for five and ten dollar difference between the, the Valcombi, you know, the bars and the Krugerrands, I got to tell you, I'm really cheap like that. Unless you're buying hundreds of them, uh, in which case you'd save five or ten dollars per unit. Um, if you're only buying a couple at a time, I don't know, man. Buy the Krugerrands. I kind of like them for a five dollar difference. And some of you're going to say, no, Brian's not. You know, Brian's recommending something that's worth five dollars more. Yeah, yeah. And I'll tell you why. It's a little bit easier to test these, and people are a little bit of gun shy, more gun shy of bars not because they should be just because they are because if they can't tell what a real bar looks like they probably don't know what a real coin looks like but for the comfort of the retail people when these are five bucks more i'll recommend them if they're 10 and 20 bucks more over than a bar i wouldn't recommend buying Kruger Rands or any of these other products again i'm all about buying a recognizable product for the least possible premium that you can uh, if you're if you're at that ability to buy 100 ounces 100 ounces of gold and you're paying 20 bucks more for this product or this product than you are for this product guess what that's an extra ounce of gold so instead of paying you know uh, 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 an extra twenty dollars per unit on 100 ounces of gold you get an extra ounce of gold for that i mean which would you rather have uh two thousand dollars worth of premium on 100 ounce of gold because that's what the next product costs you know costs more or would you have it i'd rather have 21 of these than 20 of these or 20 of these or 20 of these wouldn't you so that's my point there is uh, you know when it gets to the point where it's you know ten dollars, fifteen, and twenty dollar difference, and you're buying quantities, definitely avoid the higher premiums. Buy the bars. There's no advantage to this stuff whatsoever. Um, let me move into the next product too. That's one of the more popular products and attractive products, and been around since 1982 as well. I think 1982. Not like the Krugerrand doesn't. Well, it's 82 or 86. Gosh darn, I should know this stuff. That's what happens when you get old. I'm going to show you both sides. Canadian Maple Leaf. Why do they call it Canadian Maple Leaf? Duh. <laughs> there it is right there. Same design. Been there forever. I think the king's on them now, if I'm correct. Uh, but, uh, you know, I will say one thing. The Canadians have done a really great job on updating the designs and uh, promotion features, you know, going to the fourth nine. Not many. They started out making these in triple nine. And a lot of folks, you know, where is the uh, nine? There, it, wait, I can't even actually see it. There we go. Now that's the date right there. And where's my nines? I can't see them. There they are. Sorry. Uh, there's four nines if you can see that right there. And they've added that little kind of uh, anti-counterfeiting feature down there. I'm not sure quite how that works. And you can see now they have kind of like a really nice... I gotta hand it to the Canadians. The US Canadian Mint has done a wonderful job on designs and change up and being able to uh, properly promote this stuff by, you know, again, 
uh, uh, packaging and all that good stuff. Uh, and on the other flip side of this, you'll see the uh, queen as well. And I think all these little features too make it harder to counterfeit as well. So kudos to the Canadian Mint. Again, they, they've done a great job in packaging and, and making their coins very attractive looking. And premiums on cru uh, maple leaves, uh, uh, you know, have been, let's see here, 40, uh, let me kind of get an idea here. A little bit more than Kruger Rands. Currently, they're in the 90, spot plus $95 range. Again, in quantity, you can buy them for less uh, and give or take a little bit of money depending on your, you, you know, who you're dealing with and where you're buying them from. Uh, and here, let me go into my sales spiel here. <laughs> we advertise to beat all, you know, all the locals here in South Florida. So if you're in South Florida, definitely come and visit us if you're buying any type of gold or silver products. Uh, we also advertise to beat Atmex, SD, and J and Bullion as well. Hey, listen, I got, I got to make money on these videos, folks. So <laughs> come by and see me. If you live in South Florida, we're in a place to come to. Uh, but uh, let me get back into telling you about the product. I had to throw my, I would forget if I didn't. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, Maple Leafs, probably 95 bucks right now, give or take a little bit, depending on who your dealer is, which I hope it's me. And, uh, and uh, for the last couple of years, I think they've actually traded in that 80 uh, to, uh, hold on, Maples were as high as, at one point, uh, Maples got as high as uh, um, $115, about 115 or 120 over spot. You know, but that's when when Eagles in Buffalo, so that's actually when Eagles were like $225 over spot. Uh, crazy time there. Uh, but uh, Maples have been probably between uh, 80 and 120 bucks thereabouts in the last three years. They're currently sitting in that spot plus $95 range roughly. All right, let's go into the, uh, you know what? The, let's go into the less popular U.S. product and then we'll go into the, uh, the granddaddy of uh, bullion coins here in the U.S. and the most popular. I'm going to stick to gold buffalo. I happen to like the gold buffalo, um, uh, actually, more than the eagle. It's a 24 karat gold product, but the design is just beautiful. They did a great job on it. And I believe they came out with the gold buffaloes, what was it, 2006? Uh, man, I'm a coin dealer. I should know these days. But uh, uh, it's a fairly new design. And they, and they actually brought out the uh, uh, pure gold to compete with the maple leaf because the maple leaf. Again, brilliant marketing by the Canadians. They had the three nine maple leaf, then they went to the four, fourth nine. And trust me, folks, that fourth nine is really irrelevant unless you have millions of ounces, and it might add into a couple more ounces for you. But uh, uh, the whole point of the Canadians adding that fourth nine, for those of you familiar with why they did that, was simply marketing. Uh, but the U.S. Mint said, you know, let's get into that. Let's get into that uh, category of people that don't want to buy 900 fine coins or uh, uh, 21.6 carat, I should say, and 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 let's go after those Canadian uh, buyers that like that 24 carat stuff. And that's what the Buffalo is all about. Now, Buffalo premiums have been uh, any. Let's see where they're at right now. Give me one second. Go Buffaloes are. Uh, <coughs> Currently in that 120 spot plus around 123 bucks, uh, give or take. Again, quantities you can buy them for less. Uh, and let's put, they call it the Buffalo, which is after the uh, reverse design. It's funny they call these. Most of these designs are, are, are called after their reverse, like eagles. It's you know that's a Saint Gaudens design, but the eagles on the other side. But I digress here. There's the Buffalo, and that's why they call them Buffaloes. Gold buffalo is meant to compete with that Canadian crowd that likes, or the people that like those pure gold coins. Uh, and again, premiums uh, around 123 bucks. I think they have been as low as, you know, uh, uh, 110 bucks or something like that, and the high as 200. They didn't get quite to that epic level that Eagles got to uh, a year, two years ago or so, uh, if my memory serves me correctly. So uh, probably anywhere from uh, 110 to 175 in the last couple of years. Currently about 123 bucks over spot uh, for uh, uh, gold buffaloes. And to the granddaddy of uh, these products and. I know some of you are saying, well, you left out, uh, you know, you left out the UK, you know, Britannia's, you left out uh, this product and that product. But remember, folks, I am talking about, you know, basically uh, the, the top five uh, uh, popular products across the globe, the top five uh, most marketed products, the, 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 uh, the, the products that your dealer will more commonly deal with than any of the other products in one ounce type. So this is not a diss and I'm not trying to not show the other products. And some of those other products are actually can sometimes be cheaper than bars. But as far as, you know, recognizability, and again, that's one of my big things is when you're buying gold and or silver, 
you know, buy the least expensive premium uh, that you can uh, of a recognizable product. And when I say recognizable, I don't mean by recognizable by you or your buddies, not to take anything away from you, some of your seasoned buyers, but recognizable in the gold community, the gold wholesale community, in the gold retail community, the guys that you'll be most likely, like myself, buying and selling with, okay? Uh, these are the products that we see the most and are the most recognizable products by us and by a majority of our customers. Again, buy a recognizable product for the least premium that you can. That's what I've been preaching for decades now, and it's smart advice, especially for you larger buyers. Again, as, you, as I said, when you're buying 100 ounces of gold, if, there's, if this product is costing you $20 more per ounce, um, then this, you know, if these products are costing you 20 and 30 and 40, I mean, think about this for a second, right? Uh, 80, uh, currently around 80 versus 120 for these products, that is a $40 difference. Think about this. 100 times four, I didn't need a calculator to do that, sorry. Uh, $4,000. If you're buying 100 ounces of gold bars or you're buying 100 ounces of this, okay, of the gold eagles here, there is a 4,000 difference for you guys buying 100 ounces here. That's huge. And again, the question you have to ask yourself, would I rather buy that, spend that $4,000 premium and get 20 of these or would I rather own 22 ounces of gold for the same amount of money? That's a powerful statement, okay? And again, when you're buying smaller quantities and smaller units, maybe five or ten dollars doesn't make a difference. But you know, I'm, I'm cheap like that. And again, I don't see any advantage. Oh, here goes our finest, folks. Sorry about that. <coughs> You'll have to bear with me on this one. Oh, we forgot to tell them to turn off their sirens. Darn it! <laughs> Hang on one second. Okay, folks, sorry about that. I thought they were after me. So let me cut back in here and hold on. Let me finish my sip here before I get interrupted. Hmm. So what I was talking about is I'm kind of cheap like that. And again, as I said, what would you rather own? The premium on this, uh, 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 20 ounces of this, or you could own 22 ounces of this product for the same price. Uh, 20 times 40, 4,000 bucks. So if today you were coming in to buy gold from me, uh, whether it's buffaloes or gold eagles, you would spend on 100 ounces approximately $4,000 more than what you'd spend on this. And I would do my best talking, try to talk you into getting 22 of these, again, instead of 20 of these. And 99% of the folks that I deal with come in or talk to, uh, is when they see it from that angle, they say, yeah, absolutely, I'd rather have more gold than more premium. Uh, and, you know, folks, as I was saying, too, I'm kind of cheap even for smaller quantities. Think about this. You know, uh, uh, the $40 difference between these right here, uh, even if you're buying one ounce of gold, uh, buying this versus this, you'd be saving 40 bucks. You could buy this plus one ounce of silver uh, or maybe one and a half ounces of silver for the same price, almost two, uh, for the same price you would buy a Krugeran. So, or I mean not Krugeran, but the Gold Eagle or Maple Leaf. So if you're coming in my store, and even if you weren't buying 100 ounces, you were just buying one, I say, hey, doesn't this sound like a better deal that you can still get your ounce of gold plus two ounces of silver for the same price you'd be paying a premium on that? Uh, does that make folk, uh, sense? I, I think it does, um, as far as bars. So, and again, bars are, as you can see, we've got a little box of Alkamis out here. Uh, bars are the least expensive way to buy these products right here. Uh, and I'm not taking away anything from these other products as well. Uh, but again, folks, you know, this, you're not buying any collectability here. Uh, the other thing that I often hear, and we'll get into that, is, uh, well, they won't confiscate U.S. products. And we're going to get into confiscation and why uh, the, gold, you know, the U.S. government confiscating your gold is such a BS issue, a non you know, a non-issue that you'll find a lot of gold sellers out there and a lot of telemarketers and the guys that you see on television that call you up and, you know, try to sell you gold. Um, stay away from television people, folks. Trust me. When you're buying gold and silver, do not call those people that you see on your local cable channel or whatever. Stick with your local guys if you can't deal with us. Uh, but I digress again. Um, uh, the confiscation is such a nonsense issue, and we're going to get to that uh, uh, as well. Uh, let me talk about uh, fractional sizes on this stuff here. And I'm going to pull out a different tray here and move this over here. Fractional gold. Now, 
Oh, there's a couple different types of bars there I can show you as well. Uh, and as you can see, uh, here's uh, you know our, our core products that that we offer down here: Buffaloes, Eagles, uh, Gold One Ounce Valcombi bars, uh, Krugerrands. Um, and a lot of folks come in here and they'll ask me, well, you know, Brian, I don't have quite as much to uh, buy a. Uh, um, oh, hang on. Let me, let me get into a real quick thing too as well. Um, I showed you a Gold Eagle a little bit earlier. The U.S. Mint makes these things called Proof Gold Eagles. Uh, they, right now, the premiums I'm on are really high. So if you have Gold Proof Eagles, I kind of recommend that you sell them and trade them in. And Gold Proof Eagles, that's what one looks like versus a non-proof right there. Uh, but Gold Proof Eagles, do not buy them. Uh, do not buy them now. They're way too expensive. They've been expensive for a long time. It's a seller's market for these, not a buyer's market. You sell your Gold Eagles, you get your killer premium out of them. Remember, you've got to have your box and papers with them, too. I didn't show a, I didn't show a Proof Gold Eagle with box and papers, but uh, uh, Proof Gold Eagles, do not buy them from the U.S. Mint. Do not buy them from any dealers. They are overpriced. They are not sold for the gold value. In fact, these things sell for six, seven, eight hundred bucks over the price of gold per ounce versus 123 bucks on these. Uh, do not buy uh, the collector versions uh, from the U.S. Mint. They're again overpriced stuff. Uh, if you're buying gold, stick with the uncirculated BU editions. All right. Sorry, I wanted to add that in because I get people telling me, "Oh, I'm." I went online and I bought Gold Eagles directly from the Mint. I'm saying, well, you didn't buy Gold Eagles from the Mint because you can't buy BU Gold Eagles from the Mint uh, unless they're the special editions. In that case, they're going to charge you too much for them as well. You can only buy proof and special Mint editions from the U.S. Mint. And again, the premiums are ridiculous. Do not buy them. The only people that can sell uh, BU uh, Gold Eagles are distributors, and there's a handful of distributors, and folks, you can't buy from the distributors. I can't buy directly. Well, hold on, we do buy directly. As a wholesaler, I can buy directly from the distributors, but distributors do not sell to the retail public, and they typically sell to other larger wholesalers than who sell this stuff. But again, stay away from buying from the U.S. Mint directly on the U.S. Mint's website. Don't buy Proof Gold Eagles. And especially don't buy them in the secondary market, that's for sure. Overpriced, uh, and uh, you won't make any money on them, in my opinion. Uh, stick with the, the cheaper products here. Uh, premiums, we were talking about fractional premiums. Folks come in and say, Brian, listen, I can't afford a tenth ounce. I can't afford, I mean, tenth ounce, a one ounce. Um, you know, what other products can I buy out there? I'm going to, there's a tenth ounce maple leaf, as you can see. There's tenth ounce Krugerrands, um, and uh, here, I'm going to show you probably the most popular fractional unit out there, which is the 10th ounce. I'm not even sure. There's a 10th ounce Krugerrand right there. But I'm not even sure that they still make 10th uh, ounce Krugerrands. Uh, uh, and I'm not sure if the uh, Canadians are pr still producing 1 tenths. But the, the American 1 uh, tenth is probably the most popular product out there when it comes to 10th ounce. As you can see how tiny that is. Um, Actually, there's a couple of one grain units, but uh, there's the uh, one tenth American Eagle, and you can see the eagles and the nest down there. And one tenth eagles, uh, um, the premiums have been higher. At one time, uh, I think these were as high as wholesale. They were costing like 23 and 24 and 25 percent. Wholesale was my cost, 25 percent over spot. So think about that. You know, if gold was uh, at the time when these were 25 percent, hear me think. Let's just say 2,000 times 1.25. These things were 250 bucks over melt. So they melted for about 200. They cost me $50. Again, that's pretty big damn premium. Uh, hard to recover from that too, 25% premium. But you know that's the problem you have when you buy fractional sizes. Now, tenths are always more expensive than quarters and more expensive than, there's a half ounce American Gold Eagle right there, and I'll pull that out for you too. Um, there's a half ounce Britannia. Yes, my UK friends, there is a Britannia. And uh, there's the half ounce Gold Eagle right there, and uh, there's the obverse of it. Uh, but let me give you some premiums, what current premiums are right now. One tenth Gold Eagles, we're currently selling them for like uh, 12 or 13 percent over melt, depending on the quantities that you're buying and buying them in. Larger quantities, maybe a little bit cheaper than that. Uh, quarter ounce Eagles, which I Oh, I didn't bring one out for you. Sorry about that, but uh, that's a half ounce, uh, which is in between these two sizes, are going to be about, uh, I'm going to say 11%, 10 or 11%, again, depending on the quantity that, that you're buying currently, currently, all right? And the uh, half ounces right here, 
uh, are currently around, uh, I'm going to say 8 to 9% over spot, which isn't too bad, but still a little bit pricey. That's why we always, when, there, when you can afford it, we always kind of have customers go into the one ounce increments again because they're substantially cheaper. They're like, what, 3 and 4% over instead of being 8% to uh, uh, as high as, what, 13% for one tenth eagles, okay? So you, you can see why we would tend to steer people into larger quantities. But again, sometimes you can't afford to buy a one ounce. So, you know, what do you do? Miss the opportunity to buy gold at all by not buying anything? Uh, in this case, the premiums are not awful on, uh, uh, on uh, this stuff. Again, I, I've seen premiums as high as 24% on tenths. I've seen premiums as high as 13% uh, uh, on quarters and as high as uh, 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 10, 11, and 12% on halves. I've seen times when these fractionals weren't even available at some point. Uh, but again, when the market gets hot, uh, the affordability of level as fractionals is a lot easier for a majority of people. Uh, but again, if you can afford to buy one ounce increments, I really high, r highly recommend that you stick with one ounce in increments. That applies to bars too. I mean, here's like a, a 20 gram bar. You know, here's some smaller, uh, and this is more of a novelty, but here's one Troy grain solid gold, all right? Interestingly enough, now these are crudely made, all right? So I'm sure they didn't cost that much, but the problem with premiums is that a lot of people don't understand is that it cost as much to, and to mint and market something that size uh, and probably more than it does something in a full size. Uh, so smaller sizes don't mean that it's that it costs less to make them. It probably costs just as much to make and market these smaller pieces as it does the larger pieces. Uh, and that's one of the reasons that the premiums are probably higher on smaller increments is because it costs more to make them. All right. Uh, the second, um, relative to what they are, uh, the second reason again is popularity, you know, uh, uh, and availability. When when fractional pieces uh, uh, aren't being made by these companies because they're being overwhelmed with just producing one ounces, and we've seen that happen in the last three years, uh, they stop making some of these fractionals, and again the premiums go up on them dramatically. And at that point, what do you buy? When the premiums on the fractional common products like uh, gold maple fractionals, eagle fractionals especially, start getting ridiculously high, uh, look at the prices of uh, fractional bars. You know, one, you know, 10 gram bars, 20 gram bars, they should be more, re more reasonable. Um, and then the next place you're going to go, uh, and I told you I was going to talk to you about foreign gold, uh, is foreign gold. Uh, because when the price of fractionals uh, starts to get out of hand, you can start to go to uh, things like uh, again, there's a two gram bar by IGR. Boy, there's something you don't see. That's an Inglehart Scotia bar. I think I brought that up a little bit earlier. Uh, but let me see here. I mean, sorry, I should have had this better organized for you. Um, and there's a quarter ounce Kruger and there's something you don't see very often. I'm not even sure they're still producing them right now. Uh, but where are my French 20 francs? Doggone it. Uh, I wanted <laughs> I had them in a tray somewhere. Uh, French 20 francs are uh, hiding on me somewhere, but anyway, there's a Mexican uh, 10 peso. Those seem to be carrying a premium. There's an Austrian four ducat, a very pretty coin. 0.44 ounces uh, right there. Oh, there we go. There's a French or a Swiss 20 franc and a bezel. Uh, these are 0.44 ounces. You know, when, when the premiums of uh, half ounce eagles gotten to be around uh, 12, 13, or they weren't available at all, your options are to go into foreign gold products. Oh, actually, there's that German uh, 20 mark piece. And again, that's 1906 right there. Uh, and it doesn't trade much more than the gold price, believe it or not. But uh, um, when the fractional pieces are unavailable or the premium is just absolutely ridiculous uh, and... Uh, uh, the, you know, the bars, uh, fractional bar pieces, the fractional bar prices starts to get ridiculous or not available. We start to offer our customers the foreign coins, like the French, again, French and Swiss 20 francs, which are 0.1867 ounces each of pure gold. Uh, sovereigns, which I got one right here, which is 0.2354 ounces. Uh, per unit right there. Um, again, a little bit less than a quarter. Now the problem with this stuff, if you're not good with math, it's a little harder to do if you can't do it in your head. Uh, you got to use a calculator. But again, the premiums on this stuff, uh, if you think that the fractional prices of uh, uh, 10th ounce gold, Krugerrands, Eagles, Maples, uh, gold bars are too high, take a look at the foreign gold stuff. All right. Ask your dealer if you're not dealing with us and uh, you don't have, well, again, if you don't live in South Florida and you don't have uh, 
or you have a good local dealer you're dealing with, ask them what the best deals are as far as uh, foreign coins if you feel that the prices on fractionals are too high and fractional gold bars. Uh, what else are we going to go into? Oh, there's some cool products here. There's some Mexican products that used to be fairly cheap. Boy, that has a ridiculous premium now. Uh, again, 0.44 ounces of those. But I can start talking about, oh, there's a British U uh, UK. There's a UK, uh, uh, what is it, part of the Britannia series. I think that's a quarter ounce. Uh, but again, um, you know, I would advise sticking with quarter ounce eagles, quarter ounce maples, quarter ounce cougars, and quarter ounce uh, or tenths or halves when you can find them. Stick with the core products that I showed you uh, uh, as far as the one ounces go. Uh, what do we? What do I want to go next here? Ah, I know. Don't buy these unless. All right, I'm going to go into a don't buy these unless. And here we go. Uh, do I even have? Oh gosh, darn it, boy! I tell you, I'm not the most prepared guy out here. So I wanted to show you. I had a box of uh, uh, 20. I thought there were some 20 cents in here, but the rest of these are uh, libs. Um, I forgot to bring the box. Of Oops, sorry about that. Box of 20 cents out. Let me stick that up there. Uh, what not to buy if you're buying gold. If you're a gold buyer, what not to buy. Or if you're going to buy them, when do you buy them? Okay. Where'd my 20 cents go? There we go. Oh, okay, here. I got a few 20 cents over here. Let me see here. There you go. There's a few 20 cents. All right. U.S. gold coins. Now, the problem with most U.S. gold is that it has super high premiums. I can tell you, folks, if you're buying, uh, 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 a lot of telemarketers use this stuff. A lot of people that are YouTubers use this particular type product right here uh, to sell. And a lot of them recommend it for a couple reasons. They say, well, it's a U.S. made product. It's got some rarity uh, and the government can't confiscate it. Remember I told you you're going to get into the confiscation? Well, first off, let me in short tell you confiscation is nonsense. U.S. government is never going to confiscate your gold coins. The only reason they confiscated them back, you know, Roosevelt confiscated them back when he did, was because why? A lot of you folks know this already because you've watched many of my videos, because we were on a gold standard at the time. He could authorize it on that level and uh, uh, get away with it somewhat. Now, a lot of people say it was probably unconstitutional for him to do that then, and I probably agree with that, but we were on a gold standard. He could get away with it at the time. We, we needed to back up the, the, the dollar worth more gold. Also, most people at that time, you could trade your $20 bill for a, uh, it was, your $20 bill was backed by gold. You could trade it for a gold coin at the time, but people didn't care. They felt that, you know, it was a patriotic thing to do to turn in your gold at the time. And uh, again, again, the government didn't go after anybody. Confiscation was kind of nonsense then. It's even more nonsense now because we are not on the gold standard. They're never going to confiscate your gold. It's not going to happen, folks. If it does happen, it, it'll be just theft, and they're not going to just come after your gold. They're going to come after everything you own, all right? The other thing, too, is gold confiscation. What are they going to do? Uh, 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 Mr. Kuzmar, uh, we're here to get your gold. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine, first off, for them to confiscate gold, they have to find out who owns gold. Very few Americans own gold, number one. A small we're a very small percent, folks, that, that own gold or are thinking about owning gold. All right, We're a very small percent of the American public. And i got to tell you, I think we're the smart part. But uh, 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 first off, they'd have to know who owns it. Then they'd have to go retrieve it. Uh, and, and go after it and pay people to knock on doors and potentially even get into violent situations for those people that don't want to turn in their gold. And then 90% of the people are, are going to say, well, listen, I lost my gold in a boating accident. <laughs> so, uh, and again, folks, they wouldn't even ever go to that point. But I'm saying even if they did, that's what they would have to go through. They'd have to spend millions retrieving such a small amount of gold at, at such a s large cost they don't need to do that. You know how they can get your money much easier and make a lot more money? They can do it with a stroke of a pen. They're never going to confiscate your gold, but they will confiscate or take away your pension. They will take away your Social Security. They will cause your dollar, these things, to buy less and less and less. Uh, uh, where else? They're going to tax your home more. They're going to tax you more. The more sales tax, more income tax, more state taxes, all right? They're going to rob you that way. It's easier to rob you with the stroke of a pen uh, than s some idiot out there telling you, and I'm going to say face to face, and I'll debate anyone out there that wants to talk about confiscation, especially these telemarketers and these YouTubers that, that put people into this overpriced stuff right here uh, simply because they can make 25% more, all right? 
you're not ever going to see confiscation. I'll debate anyone out there in the YouTube world. Just, uh, you know, throw me the challenge. Uh, with that said, the problem with this stuff is it's mostly sold by telemarketers and these folks out there that only sell it because they can make 25% more on it. So the premiums that you pay for $20 gold pieces is ridiculous. Now, what is a $20 gold piece worth? 0.9675 ounces of gold, and we're going to use the current gold price of uh, uh, 1982.50. The gold, uh, $20 gold piece is currently melt for $1,918. So for each one of these things, each one of these 20s, there's $1,918. Now, a lot of times, now listen, if you can buy $20 gold pieces, you know, relatively close to the same price that you can pay for a gold eagle, a buffalo, then buy them, okay? If you can buy them for maybe even a little bit more, but again, I would still recommend, you know, buy the bars. You're going to save a lot more money. Stay away from this higher premium stuff until the premiums get more reasonable. But, you know, if someone said, Brian, I buy Eagles and Buffaloes currently, I just don't want to buy the cheaper products for whatever reason they may have, despite my telling them that it's probably the wrong move, you know, buy the less expensive items. But if they say, Brian, you know, I, you know, I like Eagles and Buffaloes. Uh, they're offering me $20 gold Saint you know, Saints and $20 Liberties, especially the greatest stuff. If someone's offering you greatest stuff uh, on 20 Libs and 20 Saints, they're just trying to, they're just trying to get in your pockets, folks. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, should I buy these? No, no, you absolutely should not buy them. Unless you can buy these, again, for a spot, you know, Melt plus $100, you know, Melt plus, you know, maybe 125 bucks in the realm of where an Eagle or a Buffalo is. Uh, and again, Melt is 1918 on these currently. Remember, I'm gonna put this out so some of you remember this. This is the, this how much gold, sometimes, sometimes I work better on visual, visuals. This is how much gold is in each one of these $20 gold pieces. 0.9675 ounces, pure, all right? Ounces, pure. So, current gold price again at uh, 1982.50, all right? Uh, they melt for uh, $1,918.07 to be exact, but uh, $1,918 per unit. If you can buy these for 100 bucks over, you know, 2018, 2025, where again, they're competitively priced close to what, you know, gold eagles or gold buffaloes are, are worth, then yeah, it's an okay deal. But that seldom ever happens, except like right now. Some of these things are really, you can buy 20s fairly cheap. But again, I'd still put you in, I'd still, again, recommend Valcombis because buy the least expensive premium that you can. And none of this stuff over here is least expensive premium. But uh, typically, you want to stay away from $20 gold pieces, graded U.S. gold pieces. And uh, you want to, as soon as someone starts on the spiel, whether it's online or whether it's in the mail or TV, and they start going to that confiscation nonsense, walk away, turn the other way and walk away. These people are just, again, trying to sell you overpriced premium crap. Uh, and if anyone's interested in talking about that, feel free to give me uh, a call at the store. Happy to uh, talk to you about that and would be happy to debate anybody on that particular topic. So what to stay away from, folks? Stay away from stuff that has a higher premium than gold eagles and uh, buffaloes and Krugerrands and maple leaves. You don't need to be spending more than 125 bucks over spot, which I still think is too much. These things can go two and $300 over their melt value. Uh, and again, Typically, when you're being offered $20 gold saints and lives, especially in the greatest stuff, you know, you're, you're, you're being shammed, in my opinion. Um, they're trying to sell you stuff that you really shouldn't be buying. And uh, if they had an honest bone in their body, they would tell you not to buy these, to stick with gold bars, stick with eagles and Krugerrands. And again, that's just not my opinion. I believe that 100%, 100%. All right, I hope I touched on that a little bit. If I didn't, uh, forgive me. Uh, so with all these products, you know, I think the next question, <laughs> I, I think I stapled that thing down there. No, I nailed it down. Uh, with all these different products we got and all these uh, cool things and $20 gold pieces and uh, uh, gold bars and everything, you know, how to pay for this stuff. All right. Another thing, if someone's asking you for a credit card to sell you gold and silver 
that kind of thing. Now, I know some online people use credit cards for deposits and things. However, if someone's charging you, a, uh, if someone's allowing you to use your credit card to buy gold, silver, and platinum, you're paying too much by the tune of at least probably 3%, and some of them even charge more than that. So whenever someone sells you a gold coin and they're promoting you to use a credit card, you just spent at least 3% more than you needed to. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, I'm very leery. We don't take credit cards on bullion here for two reasons. One of them is fraud, and the second one, again, you know, uh, American Express, I think, is like 3% is what they charge merchants. So you think when if I'm making 2% on one of these products, and that's typically what we work on, on your core products, and where are my core products again? I think I stuck them up here. Let's, let's move back to our core products here. Boy, I made quite the mess of that, didn't I? Um, you know, eagles, kurgerans, maples, uh, where's our gold bar down here again? Oh boy, people that do my inventory are going to kill me. <laughs> I just mixed everything up on them. Um, you know, the core products here, stick with these type of products. Uh, again, has been my recommendation. And 2% uh, uh, is what we typically make on some of these products. You know, like kurgerans, maples, eagles, that's a proof, sorry. Um, and credit card charges me. If I was going to use my credit card service, I pay 3%. So right off the bat, they're going to cost you 3% more. Nobody's going to sell them for what it less, what, what it, you know, more than what it costs them. So the moment someone starts uh, uh, telling you you can use credit cards with bullion, right off the bat, folks, you're paying at least 3% more than you should. Uh, how to pay? Typically cash and or checks. We take cash here up to 10,000 in our business here, and over 10,000 uh, uh, we do checks only. You know, we do hold. Uh, checks for eight business days. Different businesses may have different policies, but we do that to protect ourselves so that we don't get scammed and we'll still be here to do business with you next year. <laughs> uh, so again, credit cards. Don't pay with credit cards. I'm also leery of other online payments and uh, other type of uh, payments as well. Uh, now, the next question a lot of folks ask me too. Um, believe it or not, I get a lot of calls outside South Florida and again, if you're buying gold, silver, and platinum, you live in South Florida, make sure you visit us, visit us at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. We're brick and mortar. We'll beat the locals, and we beat Atmex, SD, and J, and Bullion. There, my second sales pitch of the show. <laughs> uh, but uh, if you don't live in South Florida, uh, and uh, uh, you're, 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 you're uh, uh, looking to... Uh, buy gold and silver and platinum, you know, I'd recommend staying, don't going to the online guys. Stay away from the on. And there's nothing wrong with SD Boy, and there's nothing wrong with Atmex and JM that I'm aware of. They're great companies. Again, I'll beat their prices, and the reason I bring their names up is because they are great companies, and if you want to be competitive and you want to beat the best out there, they are the best. So we advertise to beat them and the locals. Find someone like myself if you can locally, and if you can't find someone locally, give me a call and I'll see if I can help you out. Uh, but meanwhile, that's my advice. Try not to buy online. And one of the reasons you don't want to buy online as well, unless you absolutely have to, is that I recommend whether it's locally, uh, or again, if you don't have a good local dealer, uh, 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 find yourself a good local dealer or give us a call or come into our shop and uh, establish a relationship with your, your uh, dealer. When you're buying online, again, no matter how great the company is that you're buying from, you know, when it comes time to sell, are you going to wrap your stuff up and ship it to them? Do you feel comfortable doing that even if they send you a box and say they have it insured? I sure don't. I don't think there's any substitute even when you're buying from doing business face to face. Now, for some of you guys that uh, uh, have great coin shops near you, uh, again, that's great. Some of you don't have any good uh, coin and bullion businesses near you. Uh, again, give us a call if you're looking to buy or sell, uh, you know, if you're doing anything. But um, as I always recommend having a good face-to-face -face person that you can go to when, when, because you're going to need them when it comes time to sell. Uh, what do you look for in a good deal? Well, look for how long they've been around for. If they, if it's the same owner and they've been around for a decade plus, um, probably chances are they're going to be around longer than that. Okay, so look for someone that's got at least a decade experience in opening a store. Walk into the store. So, you know, the best thing you can do sometimes is uh, just get a good gut feeling of uh, who you're dealing with, all right? So trust your gut many times. Walk into their store. You know, if, if you walk in there and you're looking to do big 
gold deal and all you see is a bunch of pennies and nickels and things and again i'm not casting anything disparaging against some some guys but you know go someplace that you you're comfortable with go someplace that that looks like they can handle the deals for you follow your gut reaction all right um and uh, uh go with that uh also if i may recommend look on I hate to use Google and I hate to use, but look on Google, look on the online, look for reviews because in Google reviews is, you know, love or hate Google, uh, Google reviews is a great place to check and see, you know, if there's a lot of genuine uh, positive comments in there and you can also see negative stuff as well. Um, one of the best ways to find yourself a great dealer and a great person to deal with is for, through referrals, all right? Um, and again, uh, the worst places to go, in my opinion, to buy gold and silver, do not buy from people that are selling on the television. You know these guys that say you got, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, we sell gold, or, or hey, the world's coming to an end. You need to talk to us. You know, you know who I'm talking about. These television telemarketer sales. Stay the hell away from those guys. Uh, be careful when you're buying online. You know. Uh, my recommendation, if you're buying online, stick with the big guys out there, you know, uh, because anyone can open a website, anyone can go belly up real quick. Uh, the three biggies, Atmex, SD, and J, and Bullion, by the way, whose prices I will beat, uh, you know, they're here, they're established. I don't think they're going anywhere, but the smaller guys, yeah, they may have great prices, but unless you know them face-to-face, -face, you know, you just don't know who they are. They could have this great website that shows a picture of a 10-story building with their name at the top of it, and all you, for all you know, they're in their mother's basement. No, no kidding, folks. Uh, so again, stick with the biggies or find a good local dealer. Uh, and if you can't, if you don't do any of that, uh, come by and see us at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals. Well, folks, I think I have covered a lot of the different products: fiat currencies, ancient coins, silver coins, gold coins, uh, and all that good stuff. And if I missed anything, please bring it up in the comments section here um, and uh, let me know. I will try to answer comments here uh, as soon as I can. Uh, or give us a call at Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4, Mondays through Fridays. That's our hours. Uh, check out... Uh, uh, you know, check out our website, which is Commercial Rare Coins. Uh, I think it's CommercialRareCoins.com. I should know this. And uh, that's really about it, folks. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you're looking to buy gold, silver, platinum, please give us a call. Uh, we will beat all the locals. We'll beat SD, Atmex, JM, the big, the big 800-pound gorillas who I respect out there. Don't hesitate to give us a call if you don't live in our area as well. Uh, that's it, folks. Uh, this is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins. Have yourself a great day, and uh, I will talk to you in my next video. Thanks.